Hi, friends. Welcome back. Oh, it is bedtime over here. And this segment is called Bedtime Story with Mrs. Cat. I have my snuggle buddy from Jesus above here. This is Lucille. You know Mrs. Cat has seven kingdom kids. I do. So, as we get ready to start our story. Oh, hold on. You see my friends? <gasps> what time is it? It's time to choose our snuggle buddy. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> Lucille chose her snuggle buddy. Look. That's her snuggle buddy. And I'm going to choose one of Lucille's snuggle buddies, Miss Jelly Beans. Here's Miss Jelly Beans. So this is my snuggle buddy. Miss Lucille has her snuggle buddy. Do you have your snuggle buddy? All right. Well, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to go get your snuggle buddy. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, I'm snug in my bed and I'm ready to read our story tonight. So let's get started. The Bernstein Bears and the Trouble with Friends by Stan and Jan Barnes. When making friends, the cub who's wise is the cub who learns to compromise. Sister and brother bear who lived with their mama and papa in the big tree house down a sunny dirt road deep in bear country were not only sister and brother, they were playmates and they got along pretty well, most of the time. But brother was quite a lot older than sister, almost two years. And sometimes he wasn't much interested in the games she wanted to play, especially when sister got a little bossy, which she sometimes did. Now, she said one day, as she came out of the tree house with a big armload of her dolls and stuffed animals. We're gonna play tea party. You sit there and be the papa. I'll sit here and be the mama. Oh, Jesus, said brother. I'm too old to play tea party. Why? If Cousin Freddy or any of the guys saw me, I'd never hear the end of it. Why don't you find somebody your own age to play tea party with? Besides, I have a day to go skateboarding with Freddy. And off he zoomed, leaving sister all by her lonesome. All right for you, she shouted. Oh dear, said Mama, who was watching from the treehouse window. There goes Brother off to play with Freddy again. I do wish Sister had somebody her own age to play with. What about her school friends? Asked Papa, joining her at the window. They all live too far away, sighed Mama, as she watched Lonesome Sister pick up her trusty jump rope and start jumping with a friendly frog. Soon, a butterfly joined in. She has her four friends, the frogs and the butterflies, to play with, said Papa. Frogs and butterflies are all very well said Mama, but they're not the same as having a cub friend your own age. 
That's when Mama saw the moving truck out of the corner of her eye. Look, she said, a new family moving into the empty tree house down the road. It certainly would be nice if they had a cup. Sister's age. Sister saw the truck too and the car following it. Somebody's moving into the empty tree house. She said, I wonder if they have any cups. And off she skipped down the road to investigate. The truck stopped at the empty house and the moving bears began to unload it. The car pulled in behind the truck and the new family got out. There was a mama, a papa, and a little girl cub just about sister's age. Sister could hardly believe her good luck. Just what she needed, a little girl cub to jump rope, play tea party, and house, and school, and have all kinds of cub fun with. She could hardly wait to say hello. She skipped over and introduced herself. Hi, I'm Sister Belle. I, I'm six years old, and I live just down the road. Hi, said the new cub. I'm Lizzie Bruin, and this is my papa and my mama, Mr. and Mrs. Bruin. I'm six years old, too. May I try your jump rope? I can do red hot pepper. And could she ever? Lizzie Bruin was the fastest rope jumper sister had ever seen. I can jump to a thousand, said sister. I can do a thousand and one, said Lizzie, returning the rope. A thousand and two, snapped sister. A thousand and three, said Lizzie. Well, well, just see about that. Let's have a jump off here and now, said sister. Let's not and say we did, said Lizzie. Say, isn't that a playground over there? Last one's there, rotten egg. And off she ran with Sis doing her best to catch up. Well, said Mama, who had been watching from the window, the new cup certainly is a lively little thing. She may be just what Sister needs. Sister and Lizzie had quite an afternoon. They climbed to the top of the jungle gym, rode the seesaw, and pushed each other on the swings. They played tag, laughed and giggled, <laughs> rolled down a grassy bank, and picked wild flowers for their mamas. Why, thank you, sister. How lovely, said mama putting her wild flowers in water. Well, what's your new friend like? Her name is Lizzie. She's six years old. She's the only cub. And... Sister said... She's a little bossy. Oh, said Mama. Well, you certainly seem to be having fun. Oh, yes, said Sister. I have a lot of fun, a little bossy, and a little blaggy. The next morning, bright and early, the phone rang. It was Sister's new friend, Lizzie. Lizzie had set up the garage like a schoolroom. There were boxes for the pupils to sit on, and there was another box for the teacher's desk. There was even a blackboard and chalk for lessons. This is going to be fun, thought Sister Bear as she began sitting her toys on the boxes. That's when she heard the tapping sound. It was Lizzie tapping on the desk. She had a pretend pointer in one hand and a piece of chalk in the other. Please be seated, sister. It's time for your lessons. Today, I'm going to teach you the alphabet. The first letter of the alphabet is... Oh, just a minute, protested sister. 
Who said you're going to be the teacher? When I play school, I'm the teacher. Not only that, I already know my ABCs. Sister Bear, if you don't sit down this minute, I'm going to keep you after school, said Lizzie. Is that so? Shouted Sister. Well, if you don't give me that pointer, I'm going to keep you after school. That's when Sister grabbed the pointer. Soon they were rolling around the floor, rustling for the pointer, which broke in two. Now look at what you did, shouted Lizzie. You broke my best pointer. I'm not going to play with you ever again, shouted Sister, gathering up her toys. I'm going to take my dolls and go home. Sister's mad and I'm glad, shouted Lizzie as Sister marched out of the garage. Lizzie, Lizzie, in a tizzy, Sister shouted back. Back so soon? asked Mama when Sister returned, looking like a storm cloud. I'm never gonna play that Lizzie Bruin again, shouted Sister. She's much too braggy and bossy. I don't need her to play girl or anything else. It's much better playing by yourself. When you play by yourself, you can do what you want. When you want, without having to worry about that Lizzie Bruin. That's true, said Mama in a quiet voice. Of course. There are some things you really can't do very well by yourself. Like what? Asked Sister. You'd have a pretty hard time pushing yourself on a swing, said Mama. And I'd like to see you ride a seesaw by yourself. Most games like hopscotch and jacks take at least two to play. And it certainly is nice to have someone to laugh and giggle with. Maybe so, said Sister. But Lizzie is much too braggy and bossy. Why does she have to be the teacher when we play school? It seems to me, said Mama, taking Sister on her lap that Lizzie isn't the only cub that's braggy and bossy sometimes. And, of course, there is one thing you can do much better by yourself. What's that, Mama? Be lonesome, said Mama quietly. And that's when somebody knocked on the door. It was Lizzie, and she was carrying Sister's bear. When Sister took all her dolls and went home, she forgot her teddy. She said, And well, I knew it was her special favorite that she slept with since she was a baby, and I thought she might miss it. Why, thank you, Lizzie, said Mama. That was very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much, said Sister, hugging her teddy. And you can be the teacher if you want to, said Lizzie. Oh, said Sister. We can take Tom's being teacher. Terrific, said Lizzie. Great, said Sister, gathering up her doll and stuffed animals again. Let's run back to your garage's London egg. And off she scooted, <gasps> laughing and giggling, with Lizzie scampering after her. <sighs> Well, friends, that was a wonderful story. Mrs. Cat is tired, but before we go to sleep, did you enjoy the story? <sighs> That's good. Can you tell Mommy and Daddy who the main characters were in the story? Very good. Did they solve the problem in the story? Good. If they did, what was the solution? What did they agree upon to fix or solve the problem?
very good. Well, I couldn't go without letting you know that my very own snuggle buddy is in bed. You want to see? Okay. Well, Miss Cat's going to her bed. I'm nice and warm. And I will see you next time at Bedtime Stories with Miss Cat. Okay? Good night. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Good night.